Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 4. Here's a look at today's top four at four. Fargo Mayor Tim Mahoney has issued an amended version of his emergency declaration order from last Friday. It calls for occupancy to be capped at 50% or a maximum of 150 people. Mahoney's last order limited the number of people to 25%, but it was changed to comply with the 50% limit ordered by Governor Burgum. And Fargo Public Schools will keep their current learning model through the end of the semester. This comes after an FPS COVID task force meeting this morning. Individual schools can make rolling closures for one to two weeks if a building has critical staff shortages or outbreaks within the building. FPS reports they currently have 51% of their staffing positions unfilled. The task force will meet again on December 7th. In a major development in the race for a coronavirus vaccine, Moderna says testing shows its vaccine is more than 90% effective against COVID-19. The drug company's CEO says he was most excited to learn that the vaccine may possibly protect against severe disease. And the presidential transition process appears to be underway with the presumptive president-elect Joe Biden continuing to build his team. The Trump administration is still refusing to cooperate. We'll have more on the presidential transition coming up. And that wraps up today's Top Forward 4. Now let's get a first look at our weather with Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Hey, Hutch. Thanks so much, Callie. As we begin a work week, our weather started out a little on the flaky side. A few tenths of an inch, up to about a half of an inch reported in both Grand Forks and Fargo. Those showers of snow have exited the region, leaving us with a few clouds in our southern counties. But by and large, we're seeing a clearing trend. Factor in the chilly weather today and the wind, and we have feels like temperatures out there right now. The wind chill index in the single digits in Detroit Lakes, and we're not far from that in many other locations. So bundle up if you're heading outdoors this fine evening. Look at the skies here in the FM area, clearing out nicely. Temperatures will fall fairly quickly with decreasing wind and clouds. I expect will be in those mid-teens by bedtime tonight, and it'll be a little cooler in our northern communities this evening. Callie, I'm very happy to report we're going to have some warmer weather heading our way after a very cold start for many of us tomorrow morning. I'll have hour by hour details on that. We'll look ahead towards our next chance of flaky weather in the forecast here in just a few moments. I like warmer. Thanks so much, Hutch. You bet. And Minnesota Governor Tim Walz spoke this afternoon about the rapid growth of the new COVID-19 cases in the state. He was joined by front care health care workers who said the amount of patients overwhelming the hospitals is starting to take its toll. Minnesota reported its third straight day over 7,000 new cases and 62 of the state's 87 counties are now under distance learning recommendations. The governor also reported that a second young adult between the ages of 20 and 24 has died. From the virus. And a new COVID-19 testing site opens in Crookston today. Here's a look at the schedule through the end of the year. It'll be set up at the National Guard Armory and will run from noon to 6 p.m. over the course of 23 days through December. Tests this week run today through Wednesday and then next Monday and Tuesday. There are 18 other test days in December. You can pre-register on the Minnesota Department of Health's website. And the University of North Dakota is hosting another walk-up COVID testing event today. It'll go until 5 o'clock. The testing event is taking place at UND's High Performance Center. All ages are welcome, and you don't have to have COVID symptoms to be tested. Just make sure you register beforehand and wear a mask. And people are trying to make their voices heard after, after Governor Burgum announced that all high school winter sports and other extracurricular K-12 school activities are suspended until December 14th. A petition has been created saying students need to be in extracurricular activities. It also says how activities are beneficial for children's mental well-being. More than 4,500 people have signed the petition. And Minnesota's Republican Senate Majority Leader has tested positive for COVID-19. Senator Paul Gozika re released a statement saying that while he's been quarantining for the past week, he isn't experiencing any major symptoms or issues related to the virus. His announcement comes after Democratic lawmakers criticized the Republican colleagues for not notifying them about an outbreak of COVID-19 in their ranks. In Minnesota, Senator Amy Klobuchar is urging Minnesotans to get their flu vaccine. She says some communities don't have enough doses of the flu vaccine, especially in rural areas. The Minnesota Democrat is calling on the CDC to address the temporary vaccine shortages. She says if you can find the vaccine, get it as soon as you can.
If you don't get the flu vaccine and you get the flu, we know there are less hospital beds right now. You don't want to start getting symptoms of flu and not know if you have coronavirus or the flu. It's just a mess. And there's not enough beds as it is right now. So we're just asking everyone to get their flu vaccine. The CDC recommends getting the flu vaccine by the end of October, so you're already behind if you haven't done it yet. And the staggering number of people have made sexual abuse claims against the Boy Scouts of America ahead of today's deadline to come forward. Errol Barnett has the story of one man who says his nightmare lasted for years. I was in there five minutes before he unzipped my sleeping bag had his hand down my pants. Gil Gale was just 11 years old when he says a scout leader first assaulted him during a camp out in Alabama. He says another scout leader violently assaulted him when he was around 13 years old. He raped me and I can tell you that um, I struggled with drugs and alcohol until I was 32. Uh, and um, it also caused, you know, I took a couple of swings at uh, suicide. I was just in so much pain. Gail is one of thousands who are currently accusing members of the Boy Scouts of America of sexual abuse. This may be the largest child sexual abuse scandal in, in a, certainly America and maybe the world. Michael Fow represents over a thousand former Boy Scouts. The problem it was not a few bad apples, uh, wasn't a, a number of mistakes, but obviously a systematic failure uh, on the part of the Boy Scouts from, from top on down. The organization says it intends to set up a victim's compensation fund and said in a statement, quote, we are heartbroken that we cannot undo their pain, adding that they are committed to working as expeditiously as possible to provide survivors of abuse with equitable compensation. Attorneys expect to hear more from former scouts before the end of the day. Outside advisors will begin to review the 82,000 plus allegations, a process in and of itself which could take years. And Valley News Live is teaming up again with the Great Plains Food Bank for a virtual food drive. We'd really like for you to get involved and to find out more, download our free VNL News app and look for the virtual food drive and click to donate. And the presidential transition process seems to be underway, but President Trump still refuses to cooperate. We'll have more on the transition coming up. This morning, it was mighty chilly in northern Minnesota. Seven whole degrees, your low temperature in Roseau. A chilly day throughout, but some sunshine breaking through. We'll have details in your hour-by-hour -hour forecast of a nice warm-up midweek coming up next.